Hi, I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine, and welcome to Make It Fresh. Today we have a studio audience of about 22 people, our maximum, and we're going to be making a lot of different products. Let me tell you what the lineup is for today, subject to change because you never know when Jeff is driving over here from Daytona Beach if he passes a strawberry farm or uh, a roadside stand selling cherries, the whole formula could change immediately. But for now, tie-dye Jeff, Jeff Markow, will be making wild cherry Snickers ice cream. Uh, I have a surprise presentation that uh, you'll have to wait and see what it is. Um, Christy is going to make pumpkin cheese, uh, sorry, pumpkin cheesecake ice cream. Uh, Jeff is going to make sinful bun ice cream. That sounds good. That should be nice and sticky. Um, and then after lunch, uh, we'll be doing uh, Jeff again with Rocky Road ice cream and Christy finishing up with a cranberry Cosmo sorbet. Oh, that sounds good. So that's our lineup for today, and I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you in a minute. I'm going to make, uh, for a flavor today, um, which I called goat lemon ice. Now, I am not, at my age, the most hip person in the world, but I start seeing these advertisements and it says goat on it. Uh, and so I finally asked uh, my wife what it means and it's greatest of all time. And so I think that uh, you'll agree that this is the greatest of all time lemon ice that you've ever had. But my purpose for making the lemon ice is not to make you uh, a delicious product to try, but to talk to you about a vehicle of how to get into uh, the hard ice cream business, the Italian ice business, for as little money as possible. For many, many years, the average stores I were doing were $125,000, $150,000. They were 1,700 square feet, 2,000 square feet. Now we're doing stores for a much lower price than that uh, and much more, uh, shorter, smaller square footage and not on the main street. Uh, social media has done wonderful things for our business. It means that um, the people are finding out, instead of just walking by the store, they're finding out about on social media. Hey, I found this great place that has dairy-free ice cream. You've got to try it. Or there's this place that makes Italian ices or this super premium ice cream. Uh, the customers are finding you. Uh, Ray Kroc, the founder, uh, the, the head person for McDonald's, always used to say that uh, the key to success was location, location, location. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily true anymore. I think with social media, uh, you can, uh, I know Paula and I, my wife and office manager, uh, we go to restaurants now in, in different cities that we've heard about from friends. They say, oh, here's a little restaurant, it's only got 30 tables, but the chef changes the menu every other night. Instead of one of these uh, plastic coated uh, menus that you know, they haven't changed in two years, the chef is actually coming up with new flavors. Um, and that's what we look for in a restaurant. And the same thing has happened in the frozen dessert business. So let me get the lemon ice going, and then I'll talk to you about my two concepts here of uh, how to get you into business. So I have, um, did we pass out the formula? No, we're going to do that now. Here's the formula for it. And those of you watching on TV, uh, video, listen to me, YouTube. <laughs> Those of you watching on YouTube can follow along. You'll also find this recipe at our website along with 527 other recipes uh, at emerythompson.com. So it's basically going to be sugar, water, and lemon juice. No artificial chemicals, no preservatives, uh, nothing like Luigi's that. Luigi's recipe? No, this is mine. Oh, okay. Um, and this time I've gotten uh, some help uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Cannoli, who uh, hmm? Mr. Cannoli helped me on this. Let me uh, first get the uh, sugar going. Some of these are pumpkin cheesecake. Okay, well, we'll get you the right recipe. When Christy comes back in, that's going to be her formula later. So I need two pounds of sugar. Scott, open that freezer up. Sure. 
units. One point seven zero. We're going to two. Here we go. Okay, I have uh, two pounds, two pounds of sugar. Um, my four quarts of water. I'm just using re regular tap water. And you have, the water? Hmm? you have the water? I don't. What do you need? Four quarts. People often ask me the question, do I need to um, purify the water to make a really great Italian ice? Uh, my answer is 99% uh, of the time the answer is no. Uh, here in Brooksville, our water is a very, in Brooksville, Florida, our water is a very high mineral content. Most of you tasting it today wouldn't like it at all. That's why we have bottled water for you. But the people who grew up in Brooksville, Florida, or moved here 18 years ago like I did, were used to the water. We've been tasting it forever, so we see nothing wrong with it. Therefore, if I'm selling lemon ice in Brooksville, Florida, there's no reason to purify the water. Now, if I go down to Miami, most everybody in Miami uh, in the wintertime is from New York and then the Northeast. And the Northeast has a completely different water. It doesn't have the mineral content in it. I think it's a better tasting water. It's what I grew up on. So in Miami, I would say, yes, filter the water so you can get some of those minerals out. But to, for the most part, no matter where you are in the world, your audience is eating this product on water that uh, they've already tasted, so it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to filter. It's not like uh, uh, making bagels or pizza where uh, a high mineral content water will keep the uh, dough from rising properly. So this is just plain water. I am using uh, pure cane sugar. Uh, let me get a bag and just talk about that. I, Jeff used to uh, razz me forever because... Quick question, what happened to the pumpkin cheesecake recipe? We passed them out over here, so if you'll pass those out. That's cranberry for, oh. I need my lemon. We passed out the wrong one. Um, this says on it, this is a Domino, and it says pure premium cane sugar. If you go to the supermarket and you buy the local store brand or a lot of other brands, it'll say sugar. It's not cane sugar, it's uh, beet sugar. And uh, it has whole different freezing properties. It doesn't taste the same. Uh, you spend a little bit extra on the cane sugar and you'll have a better product. So plain old water, pure cane sugar. And then the real secret is fresh squeezed lemon juice. Uh, I, uh, we squeezed this uh, yesterday. Uh, from Meyers lemons, but you can use any lemon. Sunkist are great lemons. Uh, Florida is not famous for making great lemons. We make big, big lemons. They look like uh, uh, grapefruit, uh, but they have no flavor to them. So look for the Sunkist brand, and, and that will make a difference. Um, making my lemon ice this way will end up costing me just under ten dollars uh, for a three-gallon tub. That's one of these. So. $3 to make this. If I sell it at about $275, I'm going to make about $300 uh, off of this tub minus uh, the $9.85 it cost me to make it. If I want to cheapen the product, I can use a cheap extract. I can use corn sugar. Uh, I can do a lot of things, and I might get that $9.83 down to about uh, $7.90. So for 2 bucks. You're making a cheap product that can, is what's sold by wholesalers to you. Uh, if you're just buying from you know, one of my big customers who's wholesaling, it's, it's not nearly as good as this. So two, $2 to make the very best lemon ice, $2 more cost. And again, you're making about $290, $275, $290 per tub. So the bottom line is just like Jeff says, uh, use quality ingredients and you'll have a line out the door. If you buy cheap ingredients, you'll have people buying lemon ice. But you use great ingredients, you'll develop a reputation, and they'll be lined up out the door. I'm going to pour my uh, sugar into the four quarts of water. Check the formula. Four quarts of water, two pounds of pure cane sugar. And we'll stir that up. I'll just grab that. It's got cinnamon stuff on it. Ooh, it does. Good catch. Here's a fresh one down here. Now, we're storing this in cold water. Um, it's going to dissolve very quickly, less than a minute, 
to stir that up. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to heat up the water. You don't have to boil the water. You don't want to do anything to it except this. If when I pour it into the machine, I have a little stream of sugar still left in the bucket, so what? Uh, I just put two pounds of sugar in here. A little stream one way or the other, you know, an ounce is not going to make a difference. That's good enough for that. Gates all closed. And let's pour it in. I've found that if you hold the bucket up like this, you won't spill any. If you rest the bucket on the lid, uh, you're more inclined to spill. Christy, what's all that noise behind me? Jeff. Oh, of course. Being noisy. Oh, of course. But he can't hear himself. No. <laughs> okay, that's in there. Now watch, this is where Jeff and I are different. I'm going to the screen. It says make ice cream, which brings me choices. I am going to go, I don't see what I want to make on this page. I'm going to the next page. I know you can't see this up close. And I hit Italian ice and start. Now I turn on my refrigeration. Nothing is going to happen uh, as far as freezing for about six minutes. The temperature is dropping down from uh, 75 degree water down into the 30s. And then just like boiling water, all of a sudden, boom, it'll snap at a certain and things will start to freeze up. So while Jeff, uh, get back to you in a minute. While Jeff leaves his just spinning, I'm already freezing. I'm in, I'm in here to make as much ice in an hour as I possibly can. Quick question. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What's the difference between going from homemade to Italian ice? What's the difference between going to homemade to Italian ice is a slightly different speed of the infinite overrun control to control the air content. So now I'm going to add, uh, I have a secret ingredient that I'm putting in. And if you'd like to know what that is, you can email me, you can call me, and I'll be happy to tell you. I will tell our audience uh, here uh, when we're not taping. It's a cheap trick on my part to get you to call me because I get lonely and I want to talk to you. And it works. I did it 10 years ago with uh, uh, frozen yogurt and I got a call yesterday from a lady wanting to know 10 years later, what was the secret ingredient in the, uh, frozen, in, in, in the uh, frozen yogurt? And I told her and uh, she was happy and I got to talk to her and sell her a machine. Very simple. We're gonna put in the uh, lemon juice uh, do you see something bigger? What? How much do you have to measure? Uh, this will do. We're putting in um, 12 ounces for starters. Drop it. Why don't it. you use my trick that I just told you? This will work. What is this for? I dropped Christy? it. Sturdy. What? Sturdy. Sturdy? Dirty. Dirty. I don't know okay. how else to... I don't know what you're saying. Wash. Okay, now, again, it's what? freezing, it. but I want to see, like Jeff does, how it's going. I'm going to just take a tiny bit out, very carefully, and I'll taste it. That's good, but it needs a little more. Steve. Oh, Christy, on my desk is the lemon peel, I think. Oh, it's right here, sorry. It looks like two and a half. Are these two and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half and three look the same. The uh, two and a half is tapered to the bottom, the three is straight down. Have a, that's a cup. This is lemon peel. Yum. Yep. Uh, taking a cheese grater and, and grating the peel. 
and then just adding uh, a little bit of sugar to it, and um, that was it. Now I'm gonna just try it one more time. All the time it's still freezing, so I'm not wasting time watching it. I already have it through the freezing process, so by the time I say it's good, we're almost ready to pull it. And if, I, if, if you could see in here, which you can't, it's still a liquid. If I turned it off and turned it back on, this would be easier, but let's see. That's good. I'm going to go for the full. <coughs> what did we do? I'm not a pro at that. What did I, we do I did that <coughs> one time and it went everywhere. We did a full quart, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if you're adjusting your formula, let's see how I, well, I hit it. Um, three quarters of a quart of lemon juice is what I put in there. So let's see, a quart is 32, eight fours, four fours, 16. I can't do the math. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out what three quarters of a quart was in ounces. You did a cup and a half. 24, okay. So oh, we're good to go, everything's in there. Now, what I wanted to talk about is let me take this, uh, like, no, I'll take this down for a minute. Christy made that up, it's beautiful. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Now, there are two ways that we can get you into business. The biggest problem with uh, especially young people getting into business is they don't have any credit rating yet. And oh, you just put it away. I didn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you don't have your Vanna White dress on to go I like don't. this. Or, or <laughs> round 16. <laughs> um, it's very hard to get money. Uh, we can talk to you about getting an SBA loan, Small Business Administration loan. <clears throat> we also have a lease to own uh, uh, program uh, on our machines. But the important point is we've got to get a low starting point. So we have put together um, a concept of a package. I only sell my batch freezers. I don't sell anything else except for the hardener. But you can start off in business with the CB200 uh, our smallest production machine. This is going to make three quarts uh, every time. The bigger one makes six quarts and we go up from there to 44 quarts. But you can start with the CB200 and you can have a chest freezer like this. And uh, this cost me $149 at Walmart. And it goes to uh, uh, nine below zero. So it could be used for hardening small quantities of ices or ice cream. It could be used for serving out of. Um, you could uh, you know, be serving cups and pints. So I could be filling this size container, a uh, half pint, all day long and selling these uh, for about uh, $5 uh, each of lemon ice. <laughs> uh, so this is a great package to sell to people. Um, I'll also talk about pint containers, but Pint containers has become a tremendous business in ice cream. Um, because if the store, if people know that you have it, you have a convenience store or you have a pizza parlor, they can run in, they have a chest freezer like this off in the corner, and they grab two of these and they put them on the counter and the server says, um, would you like a receipt? Uh, would you like a bag? No, no. And I'm out the door in 45 seconds. I bought two, I will always buy two because I'm gonna buy a mint chip ice cream for me, and a coconut uh, ice cream for Paula. I can't come home and say, hey Paula, look what I bought for me. You know, I'll be, where's, where's my coconut? You know, I'll be, in the, I'll be in the sleeping in the garage. So you're always gonna buy two. And we're getting anywhere from eight, nine, 10, 11 dollars for a pint of ice cream. Uh, Italian ice is uh, slightly less. I then came up with the idea of you have a lot of people working in office buildings uh, who at lunchtime they go out to Starbucks and they grab a coffee and a croissant or some other thing that uh, Starbucks is selling. Well, to be truthful, if you went out at lunchtime and it doesn't matter what you look like, you could be uh, you know, 98 pounds, you could be more, but you walk back with a pint of ice cream or a pint of Italian ice and you sit down at your desk, you're gonna look kind of gluttonous. You're gonna look like, oh, 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 look at Frankie over there. He's eating a whole pint of ice cream all by himself. But if you sold a half pint, 
that's a nice little size and it's exactly half the price uh, and so I can afford to buy that. I mean, the coffee's already up to $3. I don't mind paying five for that. And I can have most of that at my lunchtime. I can put it in the freezer and have some more at 3.30. Uh, so I'm gonna consume it today. So that's a great size that nobody's selling, is, is half pints. Uh, the pints are really terrific. Would you just take that for me? I did. Okay. And taste tested it. Okay. How was it? Very good. Good. <laughs> the, uh, the pints are the perfect size uh, because you're going to eat some on the way home. Uh, ladies, if you don't know this, uh, we men are extremely smart. There is no ice cream container that you ever sent us to go out and get that doesn't have teeth marks in it. But, you know, we're, we're, we're biting into it on our way home while driving. And then we smooth it over with our finger. And then we look and we say, oh, there's an indentation. So we're so smart, as soon as we get home, we grab a spoon, still I'm packing the groceries, we grab a spoon and dig in and take a bite and get yelled at, hey, the Thompsons are coming for dinner, leave that alone. <laughs> I already had my ice cream. Uh, and what you don't, when the Thompsons don't finish up for dinner, you might have another taste of it at 10 o'clock at night. So what does this mean? It means they're gonna come back to your store tomorrow or the next day and buy two more pints. Um, I've talked about this in previous uh, videos that uh, if you're dealing, uh, thinking about doing uh, quarts or half gallons, don't. A half gallon is four of these. If these are selling at $10, that's $40 for a half gallon. And even Bill Gates, with all his money, is not going to spend 40 bucks on ice cream. It, it sits as well as having an iPhone with a $100,000 solid gold uh, case. It's, it's just over, it's overboard. But the pint is perfect. So no matter what kind of business you have, you can be selling pints with just a little chest freezer like this and making them with the small machine. Now, if, you, if, you're, if you're gonna do an ice cream parlor or a whole Italian ice parlor, then you go to the CB350. This costs more, but it's still extremely reasonable. Our prices are always direct to you, no dealers, uh, right at our website. And you tie that in with either a chest freezer like Jeff uses, they're about $900 and they're the big one. They jokingly call them the coffin because they're perfect for stuffing a body in. And it, it just lifts up like that and you've got all that product. Or you can go to our hardening cabinet, uh, which is going to make uh, a, lo a lot of storage. Imagine that all filled up with, oh, thank you, Vanna. <laughs> Imagine that filled up with pints. Um, you've got a lot of freezer there. What's unique about that is it goes to 25 below and no matter how much, say, hot soup you put into it, it's going to maintain at least 15 below. So it's going to do the job much quicker and faster. Still floppy. Still floppy, but I'm going to fill a couple containers. So um, with this, here's a little trick that Christy came up with. It's now spinning at a high rate of speed and I can fill right like that, very simple. Or, if I wanted to, I can just tap the speed down. One of my competitors sells a door for $3,000 that does this. And it doesn't work as well because you're, as it takes so much time that you're putting uh, a different consistency into the product. So I can take this down to a real slow speed and now it's even easier to fill the container. Well, is that nice? I did, overdid it a little bit, but that's beautiful. And I'm going to take it up to finish it. So instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars getting into business, you can either get into business with the CB200 three-quart machine and a little chest freezer, or you can do the CB350 um, and, and do double the volume. It all comes down to money and labor. If you don't have hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get into business and we might as well just be talking about a you know a dream that'll never happen uh, but if we can get you into business for about mm. a total store for about thirty five forty thousand dollars now that's that's doable uh, square footage we're not doing uh, family mm. uh, game centers anymore we're not doing birthdays we're not doing lots of toppings and all we've got 12 flavors of ice cream and we're just banging them out and get people out the door if it's I had a it's ready? Mm -hmm. So if you'll turn off the refrigeration. You if I had a 900 square foot store and a line out the street, I'd be a happy man because that line out the street 
people are going to say, hey, that must be a good product. I think I'll get online. And if that line can move in under 10 minutes or, or less, uh, your customers are going to be happy. So see how fast that comes out? No chemicals in here whatsoever. Basically, sugar, water, and fresh squeezed lemon juice. And I think you're going to taste something pretty amazing. So the takeaway from this, besides a great product, is we have two ways to get you into business for very little money. And then as your business grows, then the cost of this machine, uh, which is in the $30,000 range, uh, isn't going to be even a factor. You'll just say, hey, listen, I'm working 19 hours a day. And if I'm working 19 hours a day at anything, I'm making a lot of money. You can't help but be making a lot of money. And then someday you'll just graduate up to this. And what will you do with these? Well, everybody wants a second store. So instead of shipping your ice cream 20 miles to your second store, you'll ship this and teach the manager how to make the product. So that's how you grow the business. Or if you ever look on eBay for an Emory Thompson, good luck. They're not there. Uh, you can't, there's lots of the other brands of machines. There are no Emory Thompsons. They don't exist because our customers are all wildly successful and they hang on to their machines forever. So that's the pitch. I think you're going to uh, like the product that you're going to try. And uh, any questions about the, uh, the product or this concept right now or we'll hold them for the, yes. So um, this machine, if I remember, is one speed, right? No. The little one here yes. is one speed. We set it for um, a super premium gelato speed, uh, which is uh, an Italian ice. Italian ice uh, speed is not as much a factor as dairy product is. Dairy product has fat cells and they tend to blow up. You put cream into a bucket like this and stir it by hand and it's going to remain cream. You take an electric mixer, 200 RPM, stick it in there, boom, whipped cream. That, uh, so the speed and the infinite overrun primarily apply uh, to um, the, uh, the no, uh, no dairy fat cells in there. But you've got a product called Dairy Free, and that we want is a cross between the two. Uh, I use either coconut or oat, and we want to have a balance of air in there, but not as much as homemade. And so this machine is set at a speed uh, to do the dairy free and to do uh, custard, uh, gelato and all the Italian ices. This one has uh, 10 or 12 different settings in it for different flavors, plus a manual override. So if you're an executive chef and say Steve's a putz, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I can pick my speeds. Steve did 180, I want 178. Well, good luck knowing the difference between 180 and 178, but you're an executive chef, so be my guest, do it. Yes. Question for you, Steve. So just to remind me, the, the 200s to your left and then the 350s to your right? Mm -hmm. uh, the little one is, I get left and right mixed up. Sorry. This one is the 200, and, then this one and is this the is the 350. Perfect. Okay, thank you. This is around 8,000, and this is getting close to 14,000. 14. Today's and date is October 5th, 2022. Yeah, so if you're watching this in 2029, if you can find me a Ford Mustang for uh, $5,000, which was their entry price, you know, I'll take 10. Um, prices go up with time and these videos will be out there forever. We've been doing this for 16 years, Jeff. Wow. And you just look marvelous. <laughs> yeah.